For this video, I'm going to go ahead and cover the 2014 free response question number four, a problem dealing with data tables. And to start with, we have a train that runs back and forth on an east-west section of railroad track. That's going to become important a little bit later. We have train A's velocity in meters per minute, in our units, and that's given by a differentiable function VA of t, which we see values for up in this table. And so part A, we want to find the average acceleration of train A over the interval 2 to 8. Uh, once we see an average, that's going to be average value or average rate of change. And we just got to connect this with what we were given. We were given velocity, so it can't be average value. And acceleration is the rate of change for velocity. So for part A, we're going to use our average rate of change formula. Our function evaluated at the right endpoint minus our function evaluated at the starting point all over the difference between the two input values. And for that, go ahead and pull those values off the table. Uh, we have negative 120 minus 40 all over, sorry, not 40. At 2, it is 100. Minus 100 all over 8 minus 2 or 6. And at that point, once all the values are plugged in, uh, it's non-calculator specifically, so I would say don't worry too much on simplifying down. You can get down to 220 over 6 if you really want to. Get down to negative 110 over 3. The most important part at this point, though, is getting the units right. It mentions acceleration, so we just want to make sure, even though it doesn't say to indicate units of measure, make sure we put them on there. In this case, we would have meters per minute that we then divide by minutes, so meters per minute squared. And moving on to part B, do the data in the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is negative 100 meters per minute at some point on the interval 5 to 8? Once we see that we're trying to prove a value for something, make a conclusion about a value, this has to be intermediate value theorem or mean value theorem. One works with proving a function value, another works with proving a derivative value. And since we want to prove a value for velocity, which is our given function, we want to look to the intermediate value theorem. And as long as you identify that, go right into the setup for your answer. And the big thing is getting the condition out of the way for using the intermediate value theorem. And that's having a continuous function. So we were told in the problem that VA of t is differentiable. And you could leave it right there. Or you could follow up and say, and thus continuous, just to go with the specific wording of the intermediate value theorem, but it's unnecessary. Differentiable means continuous as well. And the second part of it is we have to state why that negative 100 value is special. And it's the intermediate part of the intermediate value theorem. We have to show that that number is in between two other numbers at some point on our interval. So that 100, sorry, that negative 100, if you want to write it as an inequality, you want to write this out in words, I tend to go with inequality. That negative 100, it is greater than our value at the B. One second, that's getting a little bit too crowded. Let me go ahead and just move that down to another line. That negative 100 is bigger than our velocity at time 8, and it is less than our velocity at time 5. Uh, you could use the actual values. You could write that negative 100 is greater than the negative 120, less than the 40. You could actually write out in words negative 100 is in between VA of 5 and VA of 8. You have a lot of ways to say it, but you need to highlight that negative 100 is in between. And then we call on the intermediate value theorem. We have to have that theorem's name in our answer to this problem. So by intermediate value theorem, then we just take kind of from right here where they started mentioning train A to the end of the question, and we just repeat that. Sorry. Let me get back to this. All right. And we just repeat that little section back. So by intermediate value theorem, 
train A's velocity is negative 100 meters per minute at some time t with t being between 5 and e. And that would be a good complete answer to this one. Nothing in terms of calculation, it was identifying IVT and then moving straight into conditions and getting a good explanation for your answer. So we're a little under six minutes right now, so about nine minutes if we're trying to time ourselves for the test. Let's see if we can get these last two parts in those nine minutes. So looking to part C. So part C. At time t equals two, train A's position is 300 meters east of this origin station. So 300 meters east of the origin, and it's continuing to move east. We want to write an expression involving an integral for the position of train A at time 12. And then we're actually going to use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals uh, to actually approximate the position at 12. So the big thing is getting this integral right. And for this part, if we're going to think about position, get this back to our given function. Our given function was velocity. It even gives the hint that you're going to have to use an integral. So what we're going to need to think about is where we started plus our change in position. Well, where this train starts is at 300 meters, and the change that we're going to see, the change in position, would come from a definite integral involving our velocity. And the big thing is getting the boundaries on that correct. Don't immediately go back to the table and go with it's from 0 to 12. The only position we know, is, so the thing that kind of grounds our problem is time 2. We wouldn't, we wouldn't need the whole change from 0 to 12. We just need to know the change from time 2 up to time 12. And once we have that, the important thing is, when we move on to the calculation, the Riemann sum only takes care of the definite integral. You still have to make sure you add on the 300. So again, our calculation, we're going to get 300 plus, and then move right into our Riemann sum. It's trapezoidal, three trapezoids, so they're all going to start with a one half. Uh, one extra thing I'll note to myself, and I think it's a good thing for you to note, your intervals. So our first one is from two to five. Second one would then be from five to eight, and then from eight to 12. That's the only real way I can split the time from two to 12 into three intervals, and it said as indicated by the table. So don't make up values, use the ones that are there. And make sure you note to yourself, they are not all the same. So the height of this trapezoid, or the width of the interval, is three for the first interval. And then we would use VA of two for the first base, plus VA of five for the second. And I think it's good to note those function, uh, the function notation on those, instead of jumping straight into the values. Just gives more information to the grader. Second interval from five to eight is also three wide. Its first base is the function at five, plus the second base is the function at eight, and then plus one half. This last height is four from eight to 12, and we would use VA of eight plus VA of 12. And then we would just wanna go ahead and plug the actual values in. You can pull a one half to the outside if you want to. You can start simplifying little things. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do the least amount of work possible and plug in my function values. And I'll have to keep scrolling up here. So 2 and 5 were 140. Plus 1 half times 3. Uh, 40 was for 5. 8 was negative 120. So actually I'll go ahead and change that to a minus plus one half four. Now I got this negative 120 minus the 150. Yes, 150 at time 12. And that's all you need for the expression. And the position in this case would be meters. If you choose to simplify that down and get it, great. But we've got about five minutes left. So I would rather move on to that last part and not worry about wasting time on something that the graders don't need to see. If you keep going with simplifying that and screw it up, 
then we'll lose an easy point that we currently have at this step, but would lose with any little issue with addition, subtraction, or multiplication. So moving to part D. Now we're going to add a second train to this problem. So we already have our train A going east and west, but now we're going to add this train B moving north and south. At time t, the velocity of train B is given by this. So we had our VA of t table, we have our velocity of B function. And at time 2, that train is 400 meters north of the station. Find the rate in meters per minute at which the distance between those two trains is changing at this time 2. And so if you think about the directions the trains are moving and where that distance would be, it would be right here as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we have to be able to visualize this because we're going to need it for what follows. At any time, I could go ahead and figure out, if I know distances for A and B, I could figure out how far apart they are. But what we really need to get, we need to find how that distance is changing versus time. And our notation with the variable I use would be dc over dt. Well, we don't have a function that jumps straight into the rate, but I know from Pythagorean theorem that the sum of the squares on A and B should be equal to that distance between them squared. Now if I can use that equation brings dc dt into the problem, then I'll be able to solve for what I want. And I can do that through implicit differentiation. And the derivative of a squared with respect to time would be 2a. It is not a variable t, so your implicit differentiation says we got to include this dA dt notation to show we did differentiate a variable a plus 2b db dt equals 2c dc dt. And if you want to, before you move on, you can divide out the two. It's completely optional. The bigger things are, we're looking for dc dt. We need values for every other variable in the problem, like the distance for a. We need to know how far train a is actually traveled at time two. That was back up in part c. Part c said at time two, train A was 300 miles from the station. Train B, it tells us in this part, is 400, not miles, uh, meters. 400 meters from the station. And the distance between, either by using Pythagorean theorem or remembering your Pythagorean triples, it would follow that that is 500 meters. And again, you could use the 300 and 400 and confirm it back in Pythagorean theorem. It's up to you. The rate of change for train A at time two that comes from our table back up top. And that is 100. I have to go back and remind myself that. Positive 100. The rate of change for B, or B's velocity, would come from VB of 2. It would come from plugging 2 into that brand new function we had. And that would be, let's see, so negative 5 times 4, negative 20, plus 120 is going to be 100. This would be 125. And now we can plug those values into our uh, derivative equation. We would have 2 times 300 times 100 for the DADT plus 2 times 400 times the 125 for the velocity of train B equals 2 times the current distance between them times the thing that we want. And easy way to finish up this problem, we need the value for this. So just make sure, simplify if you want to, simplify any little parts. Again, you could divide out that two at the very least, up to you how you choose to go through this. But if I just divide both, spot, both sides by that two times 500, I am done right there. Only thing I would really want, and the DC DT notation gives it to you, are the units for that. The distance units are meters versus time. In this case is minutes, so we'll have meters Per minute. And that problem we can say is done right there. Uh, so that'll do it for this particular problem. And again, I'll keep releasing videos on select uh, questions from 2013 to 2016, ones that I find a bit more difficult. Thank you for watching.